What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome to week six of the CFL. This week we're going against Matt, coach of the Last Minute Replacement. It's a pretty clever name. And yeah, uh, he's got a team that is pretty problematic. There are a few Pokemon, Mandibuzz, Lycanroc, Dusk, that are really problematic for the team. And so we'll see what we can do. It's going to be a tough matchup, but I think if we play well, we can pull it out. So let's send a challenge. I know in the team builder, Oh, interesting. It's just kind of right off the bat, hopping into it. So, at first glance, no Lycanroc and no Mandibuzz is pretty odd, um, but a pleasant surprise, I guess. We'll see. Um, yeah, I was really expecting those two Pokemon. So it looks like... And not, not even Venomoth, no Shedinja. So Rillaboom can put in a ton of work here. So can Chandelure. No Seismitoad, though. But I can't say I'm too surprised about that. Um, Ditto is my usual lead, but honestly, I don't want Ferrothorn to be the lead. So I think going with Chandelure as my lead might not be too bad. Alolan Marowak is going to be kind of a pain to deal with, because that thing hits really hard. But, yeah, if he wants to lead with Galvantula... I think Chandelure is a safe bet. Because I don't want him leading... well, if he leads Weavile, that's kind of a pain. Yeah, I'm going to lead Chandelure. And he leads Galvantula. Okay. So, we should be able to take any hit from this pretty comfortably. Well, maybe not super comfortably. Thunder does a lot of damage. Flamethrower does like 5 million damage to this thing. But, there is a chance that he has choice specs. I don't think it's super likely. But if he is, there's a chance it could knock us out. And I don't really want to risk that, so I'm just going to go hard Blissey, as he probably sets up Sticky Webs. Yeah. So I'm not too surprised by that. Uh, he only has a Defogger on his team. So what we can do is... I, I'm actually down to Stealth Rock here. He's probably going to Volt Switch out. Into something like Weavile or Alolan Marowak. But yeah, I want to get up my Stealth Rock, because that will chip away at Marowak. Um, and if he wants to get rid of the rocks, he's going to have to get rid of his webs. Webs aren't actually too problematic for my team, though. Let's see what he both switches into here. Yep, there's the Alolan Marowak. So... The question is, is he going to hard... Earthquake here. Because this thing is scary. Yeah, because in Adamant, Max Attack Earthquake would 2 a KO Pex. The only thing that wouldn't would be Flare Blitz. Eh, even Flare Blitz into Earthquake could do it. Actually, no, it wouldn't. So, this is one of those problem Pokemon. Hmm. Is he gonna Flare Blitz? How much does Blissey take? Blissey almost dies from a Flare Blitz. But only takes half from an Earthquake. What do I need Pex for? Really Weavile. I'm gonna go Pex. Let's see if he earthquakes. He goes for Poltergeist. Darn, that's gonna do a lot. I'm uh, I'm actually quite shocked he went for that. So 
So we might take another one, but he probably has Earthquake. Which means I'm in a tough spot here. Hmm. Yeah. I guess let's um run a calc real quick. Yeah, he's probably adamant. Which means there's a good chance he knocks out Pex here. So the question is, do I risk going into my Rillaboom on an Earthquake? That's a scary thing. But otherwise, I'm basically going to be sacking a Pokemon here. Darn, my Heliolisk is like useless in this game. Um, I think I'm gonna risk the Rillaboom. As he goes for the Earthquake. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we are probably slower than this thing. Because of the webs. I didn't think that would actually matter too much, but otherwise we do threaten this thing with knockoff. Granted, my current speed, I have no speed investment, but he probably expects some speed. Even then, if he's max speed, he would outspeed me. So now I go back into Pex. Do I go back into Pex? I go ditto on the flare blitz potential flare blitz here I don't think he would poltergeist mm, Pex is the safe play let's see if he flare blitzes he does flare blitz which does a lot but now we are out of poltergeist range which is the big thing which means I can pretty safely go for knockoff. On whatever wants to come in. Do I want to knock off? Yeah, I want to knock off. If he stays in. And he does. Perfect. So we knock this thing off, which is huge because we get rid of its thick club, which functionally halves its damage output. Um, so, we have two more turns of Grassy Terrain, which means we can Toxic here pretty safely on the Slowbro that wants to come in, or the Galvantula, or the Rotom. Yeah, because now we also comfortably live a Poltergeist. So Marowak just got very severely weakened, perfect. We get the Toxic off on Slowbro, which is going to go a long way. And now we can comfortably go into Blissey. As he goes for Psychic, which is going to do nothing. Actually, we gain HP that turn. Um, and now we can just teleport out. Is he slower than us? Possibly. Because he could also be running Teleport. Okay, so he's probably... He has to be running. He goes for Teleport as well here. So the question is, what do we want to bring in to prevent, I guess, some crazy shenanigans? I think if we go Pex... We invite Rotom Fan and Galvantula back in, which means we can just bring Blissey back in. 
which is good for me because rocks up is, well, it means things just get chipped away. He could go Ferrothorn here, but I think he's going to go Galvantula or Rotom Fan. And he goes Galvantula, which is, if it's Focus Sash, no longer um, works. Oh, and it's not Life Orb as well, which is good to know. We can, again, just comfortably go Blissey here. Yeah, if he wants to Volt Switch, that's fine. Because every single time a Pokemon comes in, it's taking a good amount of chip. So, I don't mind giving him the momentum here. Yeah, and he's not Life Orb, so he's probably not doing that much damage to things regardless. I mean, I guess I could figure out what, if he's modest or not. Let's see here. He might have been Focus Sash. It looks like he's timid, but honestly it's tough to tell. He goes Ferrothorn. He could try to knock here or set up more hazards. I think I pretty comfortably go into, um, I think I, I can, well, he could body press. That would be a bit of a pain. I don't want to get hit by a knockoff, though. I don't want Chandelier to get hit by a knockoff, though. Body press would be annoying. How much does Rotom Fan take? From Rillaboom's Grassy Glide. Depends on what type of set he is. Hmm. Because I could go Rillaboom here and just start to set up. I just don't want him to knock off. Well, how much does Chandelure take? It takes a decent amount from it, actually. But Flamethrower does like 5 million. And I think I'm gonna go into it. As he does knock off. Darn. That's a bummer. Um, I can pretty safely Flamethrower. And this pretty much confirms... Well, something is probably... Rotom Fan is probably coming in here. That is a bit of a bummer. I really expected a body press. Otherwise, I would have just teleported. But, um, Slowbro comes in. It's heavy duty boots. And it's definitely not specially defensive. <laughs> it is definitely not specially defensive. It took 27% from Flamethrower. Yeah, it's Fizz Def, which means Shadow Ball will knock it out here. So I can very comfortably Shadow Ball. Galvantula will probably die after rocks. Weavile could come in, but... Yep, here comes the Rotom Fan. We confirm that that is Heavy Duty Boots. Get a Spideft drop, which is nice. Um, doesn't make a difference here, actually, but... That also confirms that, well, no, it doesn't confirm that he, he might be utility, but he probably has some HP investment. That did 51%? Yeah, which means he has some HP investment. I wonder if he's max speed or not. Air Slash has a chance at knocking us out. He only outspeeds us, outspeeds us if he's max speed, though. I kind of want to go Ditto here. He might... Bolt Switch or Thunderbolt. Hmm. I could also go Heliolisk, actually. 
Heliolisk would not be bad. Because Heliolisk is not super valuable in this game. And I don't take much from his attacks anyways. So I think that's actually my play here. And if he wants to trick me a Choice Scarf or something, anticipating Blissey, I don't mind. So... His Air Slash did 16.9%, meaning he's probably, yeah, no special attack investment. So this is a pretty weak Rotom fan. It's probably Utility. My Volt Switch knocks it out, so I'm gonna go for Volt Switch here, as he Volt Switches himself. Let's see what he goes into. We will find out now, potentially, if Marowak is Lightning Rod or not, and does not seem it is. Which means it's time for Chandelure to get another KO. He's not going to be a max speed Feral Thorn. There's no way. <laughs> there is no way. Yeah, so we can go Chandelure here. And we'll get a KO. Because we just click Flamethrower. Flamethrower is gonna, yeah. I mean, Slowbro can come in, but then we click Shadow Ball again, and it'll probably knock out Rotom Fan anyways. And we know that Heliolisk is a reliable switch into Rotom Fan. And again, I don't really mind losing Heliolisk, worst case scenario. So he goes Rotom Fan, that's gonna die to Flamethrower. So we know our rocks are here to stay. He goes Weavile. We can go Tox Effects here pretty safely. At least I think so. <laughs> um, I mean, that's our play regardless, really. Yeah, even Choice Band Knockoff does like 45%, so at plus 2 it's not going to be doing a crazy amount anyways. So, yeah, we just go hard Tox Effects. Let's see, he's probably going to go for Knockoff. He does, it does 44%, which is pretty important, um, because that confirms that he is Choice Band. So he's locked into Knockoff now, which means I can just click Recover very comfortably. And I think he's in, I think he, I, we didn't need very much chip, but he is in Grassy Glide range from Rillaboom. Actually, yeah, Rillaboom sets up a sword stance and kind of just wins at this point, so that's our new win condition, really. He may stay in and go for another knockoff, but even a critical hit knockoff won't knock us out here, so I'd much rather just safely recover. And if he wants to go into something like Slowbro or Galvantula, we can um, go Blissey. If he goes into Marowak here, we can stay in and go for a Scald. Or actually we wall that. Actually Tox Effects kind of walls all of his physical attackers. He could try to go Ferrothorn here. He goes slow, bro. So we recover very comfortably, and then we can just go Blissey now. And kind of what's great is we know that he's Choice Band on that Weavile, so Tox Effects completely walls it. As he teleports, and goes into Galvantula. So this Pokemon is not a threat. So I'm gonna teleport. I was gonna say that I didn't think that was the intent there. Um, yeah, we can just teleport here. He bolt switches. What's he gonna go into? If he goes Ferrothorn or no, he goes this. Okay. So we can just go Pex again. And I think click Scald. He 
because, yeah, without a Thick Glove, even if he's adamant max attack, he can't do more than like 40% to us. He can't even go for Poltergeist as well, so he'd have to go for Earthquake, and we can just click Skull. So, yeah, I'm gonna go Pex here. And we just click Skull. We need to get two crits in a row to knock us out. With Earthquake. He goes Ferrothorn, we'll Scald, we get a burn. We do not get a burn. Um, he could try to set up some more hazards. I kind of want to knock off this thing's leftovers. I don't really want to go hard Chandelier though. I don't think he'll knock off, but but Chandelier gets a kill every time it's in on Slowbro or um, Ferrothorn. But Stealth Rock would be really annoying for Chandelier. Is he gonna knock off? I don't think he's gonna knock off. I'm gonna go Chandelier. Because he goes for Leech Seed. Okay. So, not ideal, but not the end of the world. Um, so he might be Protect. And we might be playing right into his hand, I guess, if we just click Flamethrower and then Shadow Wall. Because he can try to play around this. If I click Flamethrower here, he goes into Slowbro, takes a little bit of damage, heals a little bit from Leech Seed, and then switches into something else on Shadow Ball. If he protects here, it's a little bit of a pain. He's either going to protect or go Slowbro, though. So I think I can actually just go Rillaboom. And he goes slow, bro. Okay. So, max defense slow, bro, which I'm pretty sure is what he is, still takes a ton from Rillaboom. And I don't really fear anything he could go for. Knockoff here. Honestly, Knockoff is probably the better play. As he goes Ferrothorn. Great. So we knock off this thing's leftovers and do a bunch of damage in the process. Which is really what I was hoping for. We know he has Knockoff and Leech Seed. I think we Swords Dance here. How much do we take from a Banded, Weavile... Ice Shard. Like, 58 max. So yeah, we Swords Dance here. As he knocks off our Life Orb. Which is a bit of a bummer. But, um... Because that's gonna now reduce our damage output on... Pharaoh Thorn. But... I think... We already have a chance of knocking him out. And we live a Banded Weavile's Ice Shard from this range. So I think what I do here is I SD again. If I SD again... Nah, I should probably get a KO here. With Drain Punch. goes Alolan Marowak. It's a bold play, but that's okay, because we have um, another turn of recovery. He could outspeed us, so my play is the Grassy Glide here, and we'll knock him out. 
So a little Marowak is gone, which is really nice. We're at a comfortable amount of HP. And honestly, he has to go Weavile here to scare me out. Nothing else on his team really scares me. And Toxapex 100% walls this. So I'm very comfortable going out to that now. As he goes for the Bandit Ice Shard. And we've knocked off Ferrothorn's leftovers, so we just click Scald here. Galvantula is getting chipped away by rocks, so this thing can't even come in. Well, yeah, the thing's gone now, so. And Ferrothorn comes in. He can try to Leech Seed here if he wants. I think I just go hard Rillaboom again. Because we don't take much damage from even like a body press or anything like that. He sets up Stealth Rock, which is a bit annoying, I think. Okay, yeah, so Chandler has 25.1% health left. So it can switch in once more, which is nice. But at this point, we just click Swords Dance again. Because we don't really fear this. He goes for Gyro Ball but it's really not going to do much. And we just click Drain Punch here, we get some health back. And unfortunately, well, we'll see if we're in range or not of the, uh, of the Bandit Ice Shard. We're at 73%, I think we're actually out of range. Yeah, Bandit Ice Shard to Rillaboom does 59% max. If he's adamant, it does 64% max. And even if he gets a crit, I can win with um, Heliolisk and Chandelier. So I Grassy Glide here. And he has to go off my misplay, so he stays in. And um, yeah, that should be it. Uh, grassy Glide is going to do more. Yeah does a lot of damage. He goes for Scald. At this point, that's GG, so... Good game. Um, I'm surprised he didn't bring Lycanroc and Mandibuzz, and pleasantly surprised he didn't. Uh, Alolan Marowak was really problematic for the team to deal with, and so getting that knockoff really early on in the game made a huge difference. Um, Toxapex was able to completely wall his physical attackers, Blissey was able to completely wall his special attackers, and Rillaboom was able to actually do some work. Very rarely do I actually bring in Rillaboom and get some kills with it, so that was actually kind of nice. Um, Ditto didn't come in at all, Heliolisk didn't really do much, but it was a reliable switch into Rotom Fan, so that was good. And with this, we are now 5-1 going into our final week of the regular season. This means we've actually clinched the first place seed for the playoffs, so that's good news. It takes a lot of pressure off, and yeah, um, good games again, Matt, and I hope you guys enjoy this one and are looking forward to next week. But until the next battle, it's Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.